Hello everyone, Danas here with Action VFX. In this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to composite our Breaking Glass World stock footage collection into a live action plate. We will learn how to composite our glass asset to make a realistic result, creating some glass refraction, using the Small Water Hits Volume 2 collection to create a water splash effects, and many others. So, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so here is our plate. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create the glass first and then track it into the shot. So let's bring in our glass. I'm going to use this wine glass number three. There we go. And we want to position it to the seam. And there we go. We have our glass. However, as you can see, we have our glass breaking way too early in the scene. So we're going to find a frame where we want to have our glass to start exploding or breaking. I found that frame 75 to be the perfect frame because that's where he starts shooting. So let's move it there, frame 75. And then let's get a marker so we don't lose this frame. Okay, so now we have our breaking glass exploding at the right moment. But now we are losing the beginning part of the glass when it is intact. So let's duplicate our glass here and then let's time freeze the top one. So right click, time, freeze frame. And then we want to extend the freeze frame to the beginning. So we have our glass before it breaks. And then I want to trim the freeze frame layer just before the breaking layer appear. So I'll close bracket to trim and make sure there is no overlap between our frozen layer and the breaking glass layer. So now we have a good transition between our frozen glass and the breaking one. So now let's rename our layers. Okay, so this is what we have. Now we want to add water inside of the glass. So let's create a new solid. Let's name this liquid solid. And I want to make sure I have a near white color. And then we want to put it below all the glass. Then let's disable it and then grab pen tool and we're going to mask our solid to the shape of the glass. Okay, now let's turn on our liquid solid again and there we go. Let's reduce the opacity to something like 30%. Great, and press F, feather it out few pixels. Okay, so now we have our liquid inside the water, but here we can see the liquid stays after the glass is breaking. So let's also trim the water solid just before the glass breaks. So select the liquid solid and I'll close bracket. Now let's pre-comp all the layers that we just made, which is our liquid and our glasses. Let's name this main glass. So now we have our glass with water grouped into just one layer. So now we want to color correct our glass to make it fit the plate. Thankfully, we have a real glass on set that can be used as our reference for what our glass asset should look like. So I want to move main glass timeline so we can have our glass intact and the real glass in the same frame. And we want to start color correcting. So let's get curve. So first thing that is noticeable is our glass is a bit too opaque. To fix that, I want to go to the alpha channel of the curve and pull down some of the gray area to introduce more transparency and then increase the bright area a little bit to maintain the highlights. Okay, now let's mute the bright white color a bit by going to the RGB curve and decrease the white point. There we go. And then let's add tint. And then I want to map the black color to a dark color on the glass and the white color to the highlight. And then I'm gonna go inside the color picker and offset the color to be a bit more brighter. And then let's reduce the amount of our tint just a bit. Now let's get Gaussian Blur to blur our glass. Okay, so we have matched our color. However, our glass asset still look a bit off compared to the real glass because the reflection on our glass look different than the one on set. So let's mimic that look by simply copy that real reflection and paste it to our glass. So let's duplicate our backplate and then we're gonna time freeze it. And then we are going to rename it extra reflection. And then we're going to zoom in here and we want to mask the top area of the glass because that's what we need. 
So now let's move our extra reflection to our glass. Put our layer to the top. And then we're going to change the transfer mode to lighten. So now we want to match the shape of our real glass to our asset. So let's go to scale, press S, remove the constraint, and then let's move our anchor point to the middle of our glass. And we want to squeeze it on the X axis so it fits a bit better to our glass. Then of course you can use the mask to help it get in shape. And this is what we have, perfect. Now let's drag our main glass back into position. So we have our timing back. And then here, as you can see, our reflection stays after it breaks. So let's trim our reflection. Perfect. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we want to add a water explosion or a water splash as the glass is being shot. So let's get small water hit number three from the small water hit volume two collection. So let's zoom out here and see where our water is. Now let's scale it down and fit it into our glass. Great. So because the water splash is really small we want to make it go faster so right click and time stretch and want to go with 50 percent so now it is 50 percent shorter now let's read time our water so it begins as the glass is breaking awesome okay so in our water splash we have this bottom part here where the water sort of touching the ground so we want to lower our water and just mask out that bottom part. Press M and subtract it. There we go. Press F and feather it just a few pixels. Okay, so we still have a little bit of that ground there. So let's adjust our mask. So next, what I want to add is a bit of the water hitting the ground same time as the glass. So first, let's rename this one to water splash and then we're going to duplicate it put it below and rename this one water ground because this water is going to be the one hitting the ground so press m change the mask from subtract to add and then let's press r and zero out our rotation and then we want to select the u water ground here and just move it to the bottom here then we want to mask out the splashy part of the water and only leaving the drip that are on the ground and then let's adjust the timeline of our water ground a little bit. Let's trim the beginning where it has a big splash and then move it up. That way we only have the small after splash visible on our bar table. Okay, now put our water layers below our glass. Now I want to add some color correction to our water. So let's get curve. And then we want to reduce the highlights because it's a bit too bright and then we're going to add some tint and then i map the color just like before so now to sell the glass realism a little bit more we want to add some refraction so now we want to go to the first frame which is the frame where the glass is sitting on the table properly and then we are going to duplicate the back plate once again let's rename this background refraction and then we want to right click time and we want to freeze frame it. So now what we are going to do is we want to cut out the background refraction layer to the shape of the glass. But instead of rotoscoping, what I want to do is I just want to duplicate the main glass, put it just above the refraction, and then let's delete the Gaussian blur and tint and then reset the curves. And now we want to name this glass map. So what we want to do is we want to turn this glass matte layer into a solid color mat to be used to cut out the background refraction layer. So let's go to the curves and go to the alpha. Then we want to drag the highlights of the alpha point to the max here. There we go. So let's solo it and see what we have. Okay, so we have successfully created a solid mat for our glass, but we probably don't want to have the gray smoky area here. So to get rid of that, let's increase the contrast for our alpha. And then in the beginning here, we also have a little gray area there. So let's get rid of that too. Great. So let's unsolo it. 
okay so now we can see we have a very very rough edges here for our glass mat but that is fine so now let's go to the first frame and then we want to alpha matte our background reflection layer to the glass mat there we go so now let's add displacement map to the background reflection layer there we go then let's select displacement map layer to the main glass include the effects and mask and then we are going to change the displace map to the alpha and the alpha so now if we enable and disable our refraction this is what we have so let's play with our refraction just a little bit let's solo it and we just want to get a good refraction of the glass there we go this is pretty good let's unsolo it again perfect so now as i've mentioned earlier we have this weird edges on our glass because of the matte having a really bad edges so let's erode that let's get a matte choker put it to our glass mat there we go so now the matte choker has eroded 30 layer of edges that we had okay so before we move forward i want to adjust the displacement a little bit because i want to have this cloth pad to be a bit visible so let's adjust this so here if we play see how the displacement really add the realism to the glass here okay so now we want to add reflection on the bar table so let's duplicate our main glass again and then let's move the anchor point to the bottom of the glass here and we want to press s disable the constraint then turn it upside down by changing the y axis to minus 100 now let's move it a bit lower here there we go press t and reduce the opacity just a little bit okay so let's delete the gaussian blur and we want to get a directional blur and increase it there we go so now let's go to the first frame again and we want to mask just a little bit part of the reflection here because we have the cloth pad below the glass so we don't want to have a reflection over there press n and subtract it there we go press f and add feather so now let's rename this glass table reflection put it below everything and now we have our glass perfect the last thing we're going to do is we are going to track our glass to the plate so what i want to do is to track the bar table and we're going to do that using mocha so let's select our back plate and get mocha there we go and then we are going to select the mocha logo and so now we are inside the mocha window to track this it seems easy enough we just select an area here on the table and then hit track however the problem is we have our actor here occluding some part of the bar table and also his reflection here will also mess up with our track so what we're going to do is we want to create an occlusion layer to exclude the reflection and our foreground actor here from messing our track so let's go here and we want to create a shape around our actor here and then we want to go through the shot and continue follow our actor with our shape okay so now we have our mocha shape covering our actor so now let's rename this let's do another mask to follow the reflection okay so here we have mask our reflection here at the end i have the reflection go outside the frame because at this point we don't really need to mask our reflection anymore because it is already looking really faint so it shouldn't be a problem to the track now let's go to the first frame again and now let's rename this reflection occlusion and now we're finally going to track the table so let's get the x spline again and create the shape on the table okay so this is the area that i want to track now let's rename this table track put it below everything and then we want to disable the gear on both of our occlusion layers so that way we don't actually want to use these two as a tracker we just want to use it as an occlusion so now let's start 
tracking forwards. And perfect, we have a perfect track and the deflection and our foreground actor does not affect our track. Great. So now let's close this and save. So now we want to create a new null. Let's name this tracker. And then we're going to go to the back plate and we're going to go to the tracking data and we want to create track data. And then we want to pick the table track, hit OK, and we will have our tracking data being imported here. Next, we're going to go to export option. We're going to select transform and then select our null tracker and apply export. So now we have a null that is tracked into the shot. And then we are going to select all of the layer above the null and the back plate. So all everything that has to do with the glass and then we want to pre count them. Okay. Then we're going to select our glassware comp layer and parent it to the tracker. And now let's hit play. And perfect. So now we're just going to mask out the bottom part of the reflection here. Then press M and subtract. Press F and feather it a bit. And then you also want to mask out some shards of the glass that are going off the table on the other side. And then duplicate the back plate, put it on top, and mask out our foreground actor. And then you want to add some motion blur effects to the glass. I am using the third party plugin Real Smart Motion Blur for this. And then as icing on the cake, I want to add a gun smoke on top of the glass break, turn down the opacity and scale and then time stretch it by 50%. Then pattern the gun smoke to the tracker. And then of course on the final shot, I added muzzle flash and we are done. And that was the tutorial on how to composite breaking glassware into a live action plate. And of course, if you want to purchase the assets that I used in this tutorial, you can check out our website at actionvfx.com. At ActionVFX, we provide high quality VFX assets for your VFX needs. We have fire, explosions, energy, and many, many others. You can also sign up for our Action VFX subscription starting at the low cost of $14.99 a month. This is the most affordable way to access our library and you can cancel anytime, no contract. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. And see you next time. Bye-bye.